Super Pong console here. Part of the first generation of consoles that literally mostly ran one game. And you guessed it, Pong. This stuff is super fascinating to me. It predates me a little bit. I was born in the early 80s and this is late 70s tech. But I'm excited to get in here and see what it's like after recently doing an Atari 2600, which is pretty advanced tech compared to this. Oh, looks like my on switch was on. And I'll go ahead and throw the batteries out. Let's get those back in. I'll keep that cover on there. So this could actually run with an AC adapter, but I don't have the AC adapter. The way it came in the box is to be used with these D batteries. Let's test it out. I know we had sound. Okay. So this is not looking good. This isn't how it's supposed to look, right? Yeah, something's going on in there. So I am not a repair person and do very little fixing, but I am gonna take it apart, clean it, and see if there's anything I notice and just see what happens when we put it back together. Just using my pliers here to unscrew that. So this looks like it goes to the AC adapter and I'm noticing this red wire here is loose. It was soldered, but the solder kind of came off and yet it's stuck in there. I'm just gonna trim this off in order to get the wire out of here. I could have probably desoldered that, but that's easier. And I'm going to do the same on the black side here just to be able to remove this and get it apart. This is the most frustrating thing about these Pong consoles from what I have heard. These security screws were designed in such a way, I think, as to keep their competitors from being able to take this apart easily and get inside and look at it. Uh, they are a beast. I am not getting them with any tools that I have available here. Obviously not working with my pliers there. So we're going to go on a field trip to my friend Petey because he is good at this kind of stuff and we're going to get these screws out of here. So what I would do is it's hard. It's, it's soft enough that you could drill it or, or take a, a Dremel tool and flatten it off and then take a punch and very lightly punch it and then drill it out. And then I have an easy out that you, okay. but you need a hole first. Okay. If you don't care about the screws, that's the way I would get it out. Yeah. I don't care about the screws. I okay. just want to, uh, preserve everything, else. preserve everything else. Yeah. Okay. So let me try that and see if it works. So these guys right here, that's got a drill bit on the end of it. So you actually just mm -hmm. put that in a drill and start drilling. You take it out and put that side down and that is reverse threads. So as you're turning it out yeah. this way, it's actually tightening. Okay. So that should work. We have a little tiny divot there. I just want to see if I can drill into it. I'm just worried these are too hard. Yeah, it's walking all over the place. See, I see it. It wants to move immediately. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
So if they're hard, what I'm going to do is do your guys' suggestion and take and grind a slot in it. Ooh, you're getting it to move. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, we weren't getting any movement before, so yeah. All right. That's the way. I got it turned about like an eighth of a turn. There it goes. Thanks to Petey, we are back from our little excursion and we have these bolts here that you can see we cut into in order to make a slot to be able to use a Phillips screwdriver to get them out. Let's keep taking it apart. Okay, now this comes up here and we can see a little bit more inside. We're just going to set this aside. I left these on until now, mostly just to protect them when I had it upside down so that these knobs didn't get bent or something. We're just gonna remove these nuts here the washer behind them and then we should be able to remove the motherboard or whatever you call this back in the late 70s get our last wires out of the way and there we go we have it so here's our board One more little piece that I'm going to take off here. I would love to take the speaker out of here and this cable but there is plastic that is kind of fitted around it that I would just have to break off. So I'm gonna have to leave this together and clean around it, which is disappointing. I wish I could soak this. I wanted to show you here as well these uh, knobs that are used for controlling your paddle. You can see the mechanism moving inside of there. Let's take this plate off and look at the back side of this board. To my skill level and untrained eye, I don't see anything here that is wrong, but uh, I definitely am not an expert in this stuff. So let's get cleaning here. This is really old flux on here. It's stuck pretty good, but I like the look of it when we get it cleaned off, so I'm gonna take the time to do that. Using my BW100 here, I'm gonna put it right inside of there. And I'm doing this a few times on each side. Just put it in, move those around back and forth, and hopefully get any gunk or dust that's in there kind of cleaned up. Just another quick look, looks pretty good. I am going to try the white vinegar 
rust removal on these nuts and washers here. So we'll let those soak for a while. And in the meantime, let's clean up this plastic. I don't want to soak this because that sticker on the back is paper and it looks like with soaking I could probably get it to come off and so we're just going to clean it quick. Give it a good light scrub with our brush here and then I'll go rinse it off, dry it off, try to keep that sticker as protected as possible while also giving it a little bit of a clean. These knobs were pretty bad, so I'm excited to see what they look like when I'm all done scrubbing them, rinsing them, making sure they're all better. I cannot take this completely out of here. Once again, it's kind of plastic welded in there, so we're going to just keep the sensitive parts out of the water here and brush the rest, because otherwise cleaning this entirely with a Q-tip or a rag would take quite a long time doing the same thing with this part here. This is a little trickier. I've got more components that I want to keep out of the water. I know I'm probably making some people nervous, I'm making myself nervous, but I definitely wanted this cleaning power of the brush. I want to dry that off as much as possible before turning it over so that water doesn't run down into my speaker, even though I am going to go rinse these and dry them better off camera once I'm done washing. And we're back to our vinegar. I can see that even though there's a little bit of discoloration on some of these, any other rust that was there is just completely gone. So We'll see what it's like when I rinse those off and dry them off. Now, one thing I want to note here is that on this piece, I did not realize, but water and soap got in behind these black plates, which I don't know if I can remove, but I don't want to break them off. So it did take me quite a bit to rinse those out and make sure that they were good and clean. And now we are going to go over these again with the isopropyl alcohol and my cotton swabs and just try to get some of that staining off that even the clean that I did wasn't able to get. I'm also going to give you a bit of a fast forward of my cleaning process here of the plastic over top of the speaker using isopropyl alcohol again, combination of cotton swabs, toothbrush, rag, trying to get in these gaps with something smaller than a cotton swab. Loosen up that dirt and get it out of there. This is really old dirt. We'll use the BW100 in this switch here just to move it back and forth. Clean it out a little bit. And here's what it looks like after that clean. Not too bad. And I was right, that does come off.
there is a little bit of scarring here on the select game button. So we'll clean it. I'm just gonna put this back on and let those wounds be beautiful. Okay, we have everything clean, ready to put back together. So let's do it. I am thinking that I won't reuse these bolts, so I went and purchased some replacements. They're a little bit different, but I think they will work. Let's find out. They feel like they are grabbing correctly and holding that together. I love the idea of Pong. Like I'm drawn to the simplicity of it. If you're familiar with the paradox of choice, it's this idea that we aren't necessarily made happy by having a bunch of options. We tend to be most satisfied when we have a few things to choose from. I like the idea of a time where if you were at a game with a friend, you weren't faced with the overwhelming library of choice. It was simply, hey, want to play some Pong? I had a lot of fun researching Pong for this video, kind of taking a deep dive and going into how it started and the first arcade system that it was used in. Stories about how couples met because somebody shyly approached another person asking if they would play a game of Pong with them. This game is so simple and so beautiful. It requires skill. You can get better at it, but the concept is amazingly simple. Shoulder to shoulder, a test of skill, elegantly simple. There's something magical about it. I would love it if you have a story revolving around Pong. Please leave a comment. Let us know. Let's give it a test. See what we are working with. Well, that is not encouraging. Let's turn the TV volume off here. None of the volume actually goes through the TV. It comes right through the system here. But it obviously is not working still. I will move around some of these buttons and knobs as if that's going to help anything, even though I know it isn't. It looks very similar to how it was when I started. So I don't think I caused any problems, but I definitely didn't figure out what was actually wrong with this on the inside. 
turn it back off and on to see. Yep, same thing. Okay, so we're going to take a closer look at this. I gave this to Steve at Tronics Fix, uh, and he took this chip out, the main one here in the middle with the Atari logo on it, and put it back on. We couldn't see anything else wrong. Now that we're done with that, we have a little bit different of a visual on the screen, but obviously still not working. So we are kind of at that point where it seems like we might be done with this project. A little disappointing, but what it is. Even with the help of Steve at Tronics Fix, I wasn't able to get this working again. But I would love to know if any of you have any ideas for something else we can try. If you want to see a more satisfying restoration, be sure to check out the Atari 2600 that I cleaned here, and we'll see you next time.